Hello ladies and gentlemen, George here, and today I want to present to you a, a, a video with how to use armor more effectively given different terrain types from open ground to dense, more dense terrain in the ETO. Now, Pacific Theater of Operations versus uh, theater, uh, European Theater of Operations versus Desert um, Theater of Operations, you have three sets of vastly different terrain. Of course, PTO is only by SSR, um, so my focus will be on um, the European theater of operations, where you can have varied terrain from wide open ground, the steps, for example, to village hexes um, and city and city hexes. Now, these are the geomorphic uh, boards, but with hassles, you get into more intricate um, examples whereby you have different terrain types and each hassle has virtually its own uh, chapter B. Um, for the last couple of years, I've been playing um, Bounding Fire Into the Rubble with, with Alain Chabot. And um, uh, speaking of dense terrain, that's where you'll find some really dense stuff. So <laughs> um, when, you, when you think of the uh, actual formula for density and mass over matter, I believe it is, it's, it's an equation that really inflicts a lot of punishment on you if you don't know how to use the terrain to your advantage. Now up here, I have a very simple example of open terrain. And with open ground, it's pretty much a turkey shoot. You come into my LOS, I'm a better uh, judge at judging line of sight than you are. I take the shot, I get a kill. Because pretty much if you take a 76L gun or or 75 double L gun, the only thing that is really protecting you is how much armor you have. The other thing that uh, can help you on the defensive side is smoke. And hopefully I'll give you a, a pretty good example here. So on the left we have a uh, Panzerkampfwagen 5 version D, and on the right we have a M10 GMC uh, tank destroyer. Now, for the purposes of demonstrating this example, I'm going to roll a 2d6, and the uh, red dice represents the German player, the uh, white dice uh, represents the American player to decide whose, uh, let's say, prep fire phase it is, okay? And then we'll do a two hit, two kill example. So let's do it. Equal. Snake eyes. <laughs> Uh, that I didn't expect. Let's do it again. All right. So this fellow will go first. He rolled a six. He rolled a three. Let's say, um, let's say he will roll first. He has a lot of things to think about. Um, before I go there and do the example, um, the inspiration for doing this um, uh, video is Gamer Hudson, who has his own channel and. Um, he commented on a couple of my videos, and I also watched uh, his video about SK and, and learning the game by not being restrained, restricted to a scenario, but rather than just putting some units on the board and playing out some examples, which is a great way to learn. And he asked me about the Discord server, and I should put a uh, link to the Discord server in the uh, link below it's operated by hong kong wargamer it's one of my favorite uh, servers there's a lot of uh, people with knowledge there and you can get basically uh, q a there and you can look up um, different questions and answers and i think i've demonstrated before on prior um, in, on prior occasions now you're in this situation and the first thing that you have to decide is what we, what uh, target type you're going to do. Um, you can do area, but that ain't going to get you very far. In this case, you're better off firing vehicle or target type. Or the other thing you can do is fire smoke into this X, get the heck out of jo dodge, and try to flank him. Um, now, both units have 15, uh, 15 movement points. However, the American tank destroyer is open top, so if he hits the road, he's going to hit the road running, and it will only cost him 
half of a movement point per rotex, whereas the German unit is not so mobile. He has an asterisk next to his movement points and red movement points, meaning he has to roll for mechanical reliability, plus um, he might um, uh, incur delay. Um, now, to be honest with you, I didn't look at the notes bad, 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 because that uh, that um, star might mean that his breakdown number is actually a lot less than that. See? 10, stall, 11, immobilize. Oh boy. And this guy can burn. <laughs> and he has an SD5. Plus he has a crew survival of 5, but uh, uh, he can incur a burnout. So you got to be careful. So normally, if you take a look at the uh, two kill number, let me uh, get the uh, yeah. Let me get the uh, board up. Actually, the uh, two kill ordinance. Um, even before considering the, the, the ordinance, I would look at the AP number for a 75L, 76L, sorry. So a 76L, you cross-reference, it's, uh, don't look at this because that's a Russian. 76L is here. It's a 17 to kill, and he has 18 armor factors with a weaker turret. So if, if you go one step weaker on the um, on the armor factors from 18, it will drop down to 14. 14, 17, and I already calculated the range to be 19. So at 19 uh, hexes away with a 76L, you're looking at uh, reducing his um, two kill number by one. So that would make it 16. So it's impossible to affect that fellow with a regular AP round. Um, and if we reduce it to 16 and hit, we hit the turret, uh, the turret would have 14 uh, firepower factors. So I would need uh, something like Snake Eyes to even get, um, well, either a two kill snakes to even affect it, or I would need uh, a critical hit, pretty much. So I'm better off firing smoke and um, getting up the heck out of dodge. But let's do a typical to hit dice roll in, in any case, just so we can see what what is going on. So again, who is the better judge of, of uh, LOS? Let's say he determined that I he does have a loss. In this example, it's pretty simple because we're going down the hex spine. There's one hindrance, and and it's 18 hexes actually. Does 18 hexes make a difference? 18 hexes should make a difference because my two kill modifier is not reduced by one. So 17 um, minus 14 for the weakest armor would be probably a three to snake eyes to kill. Hmm. Anywho, so at that range, what is my two, um, uh, two hit number? It's a base eight. Let's see if I did it properly. Base eight, it's an L type weapon. So let's uh, review. So let's go to the two hit ordinance. At 18 hex range, we got a base eight. If it was pre-1944, the Americans used the red. We're in 44, so we want to use the black. Um, it's an L-type weapon at that range. I increase my two hit number by one, making a base nine. There's a one pl uh, plus one hindrance. Um, the grain, it's indicated under my loss. Minus one, because he's a large target. So it's basically a nine to hit on the first shot. And the reason why I'm saying it's a, on the first shot is because he has a rate of fire of two. 
So let's do a two hit and hope for a critical hit. Or a turret hit. Two hit. I got a hall hit. No uh and no rate. If it was the reverse, I would have had a uh, uh, rate. So at that range, it's pretty much in, ineffective. Um, pretty much ineffective because because uh, when we look at the two kill number, it is a seventeen. His armor uh, factors are 18, and we hit the hull because our color die is greater than the white die. Would it have made a difference if I fired a PCR? If I fired a PCR with a 76L, my uh, two kill number would have been just a 20. At 18 hexes, I would have had to. Um, reduce my uh, two kill number by one, making it a 19, okay? But I would also have had to increase my two kill, my two hit, uh, decrease my two, uh, two hit number by minus one. So basically, not much difference. You know your terrain, but also know you have, the second item you have to keep in mind is what is your uh, armored fighting vehicle capable of and in this case, if we look at the vehicle notes, um, we would have had um, we would have had uh, APCR as of in ETO, I believe, as of 1944 with a depletion number of five. And as we said before, it would not have made a a, a difference. SP five. That I don't know. I would have to uh, check it up in the vehicle notes. Shame on. Pretty much. Now, if this fellow would uh, were to fire back, it would be slightly different. He does have a, a minus one act. We should never forget our acquisitions. Flip. Let's put it down. Below the target. Okay. Let's center this thing so you can see what's going on. All right, so, so far in back, we know it's at 18 X range. It's a double L weapon. So let's do the reverse. Okay, to hit 18 X range um, and double L, I, that means uh, double L at 18 hexes. I'm going to increase my base by 1 to 9. So, so far, it's the same thing basic 9, and we declare vehicle or target type. Uh, plus 1 hindrance. Uh, the tank destroyer is not a large target, but I am buttoned up, so plus 1 there. Um, and I don't have an act. So it's basically nine plus two, making it a seven to hit. And pretty much on the two kill table, I don't really care, but because a 75 um, double L is a 23 to, to, to kill, and he only has armor of eight. Um, so anything but a 12, here we go. 23 minus eight is 15, anything but a 12. So first, let's uh, two hit seven. Hit, no rate, and then now it's only a matter, well, I forgot one thing. He also has the 10, so I missed. <laughs> I forgot one thing. This fellow is in woods, he does get the 10. So plus one 10. would make it a six to hit, not a seven. Missed by one. Um, I get an act, and now I can choose to intensify, which would be all of the above plus two, making it even more um, problematic to to um, to roll again with intensifier uh, because I stand a very, uh, a bigger chance of muffing the main armament rather than hitting it. 
So even if we do that, let's see. All right, let's, so in the case of intensifier, we'd have to add plus two for intensifier and minus one acquisition. And the breakdown number of the main armament goes down to 12, uh, 10. So let's see, the positives are one, two, three, four, five, minus one is four. So it would be a five to hit. Let's see, to hit. And I nearly broke the gun. But this gives you now a minus two act. There you go. Open ground, I'm not really concerned. It's a bit of a turkey shoot. Know your armor strengths and weaknesses. And if you are at ace in judging loss, you pretty much have the game down packed. Now let's go to a, another board, the city board, the famous board. Uh, this is where everything uh, all started. And uh, with the city board, let's move these guys off, uh, off board for the moment. With the city board, it's pretty much a fluid situation, except what transpires here is uh, the way I framed it previously was the uh, Greek Easter egg um, tradition where who's going to hit the egg first and and who will end up um, uh, getting the cracked egg and who will have the red egg that is not cracked up. And what that all means is basically with a 75L gun, you have a pretty high to kill number and whoever gets the, the shot first um, wins. Whoever gets the, the, the was shot first and does not roll a very unfortunate uh, dice roll kind of wins but again there's a couple of uh, nuances that uh, you can put into play and um, get something some uh, basically unbelievable results so I'm gonna I put a mark what do I put here a Panzer um, the Panzerkampfwagen 4H, but uh, let's let's put the the um, the big guy here, okay. Let's put the uh, big guy here first, um, and this is basically um, it, it's really a bit of a um, atypical uh, gameplay but let's see how it transpires okay all right so we'll start how do we how we would we otherwise attack this uh, monster and a half all right so let's start for one let's start for one uh, turn our covered arc for two and now since I, I am crew exposed I can take care I can take advantage of the uh, road movement rate right so so far two two and a half three and a half four four and a half five five and a half five and a half six seven eight nine nine let's put nine on our dice so we don't forget and, and talk a little bit so at this point at this point let's remove all these moves i'm at nine and i'm still in motion and let's put here all right and this guy's thinking this unit here is thinking, or this player is thinking, what is he going to do with this fellow? And he cannot go do a motion attempt because he can't see me so far, so good. I'm a nine, nine and a half, ten. If I take a line of sight check, I'm going to have to fire. But guess what? He'll have to turn his turret one over in order to um, even touch me. So, hey, just for the sake of the example, let's do a line of sight check and see what happens. 
Now, I'm at range of five, and I drew line of sight, so I have to fire. And I'm still in motion. I didn't say stop at nine. So let's turn the covered arc counterclockwise, the turret covered arc counterclockwise uh, for one. So let's calculate this, see what the heck is going to go on. So at that range, your basic two kill number is a 10. I've been practicing this so long and I am declaring vehicular target type. What choice do I have? Right. And then I am buttoned up plus one. Plus three, because I changed my turret covered arc, it's a, uh, is it plus three or plus, plus two? Plus three is if you don't have a turret, so it's plus two, I believe. It's a slow turret. Yeah, slow turret. Plus two, because I, I changed my turret covered arc. Okay. And then case J is an additional plus four, I believe. Uh, not plus four, because I've only expended uh, half a movement point there. Plus four, case J. So what do we got here? Wow, look at that. Ten. Plus one buttoned up plus two, plus four, six, seven. I need a three to hit. And um, the rate goes down by one because uh, his turret is not a quick turret like this one. So no more rate. He changed his turret covered arc. Horrible mistake to hit. <laughs> Just mouth the gun. Uh, Oh well, let's say that 12 didn't happen. All right, nine here, nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half, 11, 12, 13, 13 and a half, 14, and I got a slide shot. Now, let's say I waited until he came here and I, I now stop. Okay. He stopped. Um, he was in my line of sight for some time. Okay. So let's say here um, there's no LOS there. Right. So here would be uh, a half, uh, turns around twice. So it's a plus two. Uh, And minus one, is it minus one or minus two here? It's point blank. Case O, minus two, minus two. All right, so let's let's do that shot again and see if our, um, our, um, to hit or a quite a bit different. So I still had to change my covered arc for plus two. I'm still buttoned up plus one. And now plus two, negative two for range, uh, actually for um, motion and range, case L. That cancels each other out. Now I got a seven to hit. Hit. Now this guy's pretty much uh, uh, fried, uh, but but I still have some units here. So at this juncture, let's just see uh, the two kill example, how that would uh, pan out. I'm saying fried because he's probably going to end up being a burning wreck. So at this range of 75 double L is 23 
who kill. Frontal armors are eight, and at that range, um, that 23 is modified by a one, a plus one, making it 24. 24 minus eight. 24 minus 8, we got 16. If I roll less than 8, that guy's a burning wreck, which is, let's see, <laughs> let's see, 2 kill. 9, he's not a burning wreck, so he gets crew survival, and his crew survival is 7, 2d6. He rolls a 7, he got a crew out of that. <laughs> the crew could possibly jump into uh, close combat. Let's get the crew out. Here. Squad. Uh, allied. Americans. Half squad. Squad. Here. Here's the crew. It's elite. This guy is burnt. Well, not burnt, but knocked out. Wreck. This fellow would go under hazardous movement. Just like that. And um, he can fire at him with the coax at uh, uh, eight down two. And he's pretty much toast. And he's marked with first fire. But this fellow now can go um, crew exposed he starts for one starts for one one and a half two and a half three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then changes his turret covered arc clockwise. 13, 13 and a half stays in motion. Maybe I should have started him a little bit closer to the action, but at the end of the game, what I wanted to demonstrate to you is if this guy, um, if this fellow wasn't marked with first fire and wanted to fire at him, um, he would be able to declare a gun duel and he would probably win the gun duel rule because the white um, square indicates that his uh, modifiers, his fire modifiers for the purposes of a, of a gun duel are halved. Let's get a closer look. Boink. Now, we're talking about city terrain and we got a little bit more dense terrain than before. And we did another Okay, clone him. Let's clone him. And we're talking about terrain and uh, armor attacks. I can't use uh, the term ar armor assault because that designates a, an attack um, where armor is accompanied by infantry. And um, infantry is afforded the cover of the tank. Let's go for it, guys. Now, again, we're this terrain is not quite dense, but there are, are a couple of things that can make it all nice and dense. In particular, trenches. And trenches can connect to multi-hex buildings. There's rubble. And there's roadblocks. Now, this is from the St. Mary de Glees Castle. I'm not familiar with that yet. I will be soon, I hope. And then there are roadblocks. 
so basically that's why I had the little uh, line here with dotted hexes and basically what a roadblock does is it prevents the armored fighting vehicle from traversing this location here and those red dots uh, designate where how um, it spans it spans from center hex to center hex and pretty much no uh, armored fighting vehicle can transverse that if you have a trench going over the trench will cost you a uh, a bug check uh, similarly with wire going through wire um, it'll cost you two movement points plus the cost of terrain so let's say this fellow is in motion and you go here uh, for three you do a bog check and pretty much this fellow was is bogged because I rolled a 10 plus one for a ground uh, a plus, uh, ground um, normal ground pressure and plus two a DRM for the wire that's a 13 so this fellow is bogged um, in the basic game there was it was pretty much automatic that if an AFE went into wire it would um, it would uh, clear it back in the old days of squad leader but now things are, are a bit more complicated <laughs> You can end up clearing it or you can end up being immobilized in it as an armored fighting vehicle which makes sense if you have wire going all over the place in your tracks and there's it's a dense uh, obstacle you're done so city board pretty much uh, a little bit more dense than open ground but there are things you, you need to know and uh, as well uh, you got to be careful of, of rubble because rubble can um, can be a, an impediment to um, to bi uh, vehicular bypass movement. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I can bypass this two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because uh, for vehicles, uh, bypass is twice the uh, open terrain. Um, when you're playing with Vassal, it becomes a bit more complicated when you're dealing with hexes of this nature because, technically speaking, you're supposed to take the width of the, your counter and put it on the, um, on the hex side and you should have uh, space between the obstacle and the open uh, and the hex side. So for this example here, I would judge this place here, this hex, this hex side here in P5, uh, as a hex that you would not be able to uh, bypass because it, the building literally touches the hex side, whereas this hex side you can, and it does make a, a difference because you have to determine where is the covered arc focal point when you are uh, bypassing for your opponent. Now. With the advent of hassles and more complicated boards, here's board number 55. And um, what's interesting about board 55 is uh, it has narrow streets. And the game changes when things come with, uh, uh, when narrow streets are involved, okay? Um, and here, what I'd like to demonstrate is to the best of my ability and guys I'm not an expert uh, what are the uh, things you really need to know about um, an hour street well let's take this guy for example or this unit here our beloved Panzer 5 I believe um, and you definitely don't want to go up against this guy but for the purpose of just demonstrating things, um, he can go into the narrow street, providing his um, 
turret covered arc is either aligned with this front or rear vehicular covered arc. Um, and once he goes into the narrow street, he cannot do a about face because he's simply too large. <laughs> In addition, changing his vehicular covered arc will require a task check and it will cost him two movement points whether he passes or not. And a task check is subject to uh, DRMs. If he was uh, buttoned up, it would be a plus one. And he is a double L, uh, uh, double L type weapon. That's another plus two. Um, if he has an armor leader, he can use the armor leader uh, modifier. So let's roll a T uh, one uh, D six and see what would happen. Six. I just expended two movement points for no reason. Now, again, uh, what would uh, occur here is uh, his turret covered arc, uh, actually his, his covered arc focal point is where you have to aim to see if you have line of sight to him. Um, let's go back and uh, use another example. Now, in terms of what vehicles can do a 180 on a narrow street, it has to be a very small. Now this, this vehicle here is not a good example because he is small, not very small. So you would have to have two white dots in the armor factors in order to be able to designate, to uh, turn around in a narrow street. Um, motorcycles can do a 180 if they expend one quarter of the MP. And a very small vehicle, again, this is not a good example, this is the best I could find, would expend half their MP to, to do an about face and turn around 180. Everybody else is kind of restricted. Now, the other, the other uh, impediment that um, narrow streets uh, kind of face is that um, an armored fighting vehicle caught in uh, a narrow street is subject to um, street fighting, which is a minus one to your ambush rule, or minus one to your two kill rule. I think it's minus one to your two kill rule. It's all here in this baby. So here it is in Delta 7.211, street fighting is a minus one DRM um, to the uh, minus one CC DRM. So basically, this fellow is what I, I'd like to call a, a, a broom bar, right? Um, going into a narrow street, even with a an assault gun that is, um, you know, m made for for uh, city fighting uh, and uh, assaulting villages and towns and cities uh, for the purposes of causing destruction and, and, and ruin with the 150 uh, star type weapon, what do you expect? This fellow though, if he comes in, one, two, three, they can attempt street fighting uh, and uh, the toss check would be an eight because the leader sh leader can use his um, his uh, DRM. They jump in. Boom. Now what do they need? Okay, let's take a look. Now uh, the reason why I'm doing this video, as I was telling you before, is I played a number of scenarios where there is a lot of dense terrain, and for some reason or another, the scenario des designer is giving you a plethora of tanks. I've seen countless amount of tanks just blown up, blown up to smithereens because I guess they weren't used properly. And and when you look at at the terrain with rubble, yeah, into the rubble, uh, bounding fire productions, 
you're looking at rubble, you're looking at debris, you're looking at a whole plethora of different terrain types. Your, your, your brain kind of freezes and you're, you're asking yourself, how can this happen? Right? Let's, let's blow it up here. Uh, how can this happen? Right? Anywho, let's, let's, uh, let's carry out with the, you know, carry on with this example. So they pass their task check. They uh, announce street fighting. They have a minus one ambush roll. Plus this monster has no manned usable MGs. So there's another minus one. So their CCV value for the squad is five. Add one for the leader uh, is six. And we get a minus two. I need eight or less to blow this thing apart. Let's do it. CC. It's a runner. No crew survival, nothing. So basically in this instance, you're better off going in with some infantry against this dude and doing a, a real armor assault to this extent. Okay. And you can declare an assault move, I suppose. Um, the other thing, roadblocks. So in this case, if I understood the um, rule correctly, let's get our little demarcation sign. If I understood the rule correctly, Basically, if you are putting a roadblock, it is covering this, these two hexes. And basically, here's the, you've got to put it on a focal point. It's covering this two hexes from here to there. Um, so basically, let's say, uh, let's say you want to bypass this uh, um, roadblock because you cannot um, go past it and it's from center dot to center dot so basically in this case um, without just for the sake of, of uh, the example we'll just use one AFE you, you start for one two and bypass three four and now you're in trouble because this ATR actually has a line of sight Jeez. a line of sight to your front so you're not in trouble you're not in trouble but this ATR can conceivably do a delivery mobilization on you Yeah, so starts for one, two, three, four, and then now five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and remains in motion and bypass along this hex side. Certainly hope that's the case. At least that's the way I understood it. Now, when I was reading the rule book, um, what the rule book said in terms of the example was um, more focused on infantry than tanks. Well, if I'm wrong, kindly correct me in the comments below. The other thing you should know is on a narrow road or a narrow street, mines uh, have to appear revealed. Okay, uh, when this person or this unit 
hits a mind, let's reveal. You don't have to reveal. Um, so this is an AT mine. Let's do AT with AT. All right. Um, when this uh, unit is hit by a mine, you have to take the uh, higher of the two factors. Um, if it's in one of these two hexes, either one or the other, as the vehicle is going down the road, it will be hit uh, regardless of whether the mine is in this hex or that hex. By virtue of being straddled on this street road, these mines will hit that vehicle. And if you have two AT mines, the higher of the two will apply. So basically, the point of the uh, of this is, is you don't put the mine factors like this. You can put them in one of the two hexes, and as soon as the vehicle goes by here, kaboom. That's, again, how I understood it. If I'm wrong, guys, kindly correct me. Similarly, if, if I have um, an anti-personnel mine here, and these guys are going down the road, one, two, they get hit by the six as well. Now, let's say these guys were elites and they had a, um, and they had a uh, DC charge and they wanted to remove um, this roadblock. It would be suffice suffice it to say that if they're in one of the three hexes um, covering the focal point of the uh, roadblock, they would place it there and try and clear it. Uh, the other thing you need to know, which is important, is that wrecks cannot be cleared or immobilized tanks cannot be cleared of a narrow street, which is uh, the equivalent of a one lane bridge, by the way. Let's wreck this guy. Boom. So we got a wreck there now. Pretty amazing. Right, let's uh, just for the sake of argument, let's say uh, if I have a fellow here, and this guy pops up, what happens? I hit him. Line of sight. Line of sight focal point. Boink, that's a side shot. Right there. Let's do it again. That's a side shot. That's the side shot I was thinking and keeping in mind. Wow. So let's sum up this video. It's 48 minutes long. Okay. Um, what was the point of this video? The point of this video is that depending on what type of terrain is contained in your battlefield, you have to adopt your armor accordingly, your armor tactics accordingly. Some of the tools that you need to know about is A, your mobility, B, the type of weapons you have and the type of ammunition you have. Three is knowing what ambushes to avoid and where to avoid them. And four, read chapter B, especially of the, of if you're reading, if you're playing a hassle, you also have to read chapter B of the particular hassle you're, you're playing because there might be nuances that override the, or complement the existing rules to, to the game. So you have to be careful um, but at all times, do not feel despondent uh, about playing armor in such dense terrain. If I can do it, you can do it. doesn't mean I, I'm winning all the time. But, hey, I, at least I got some basics down packed. I hope. I could be proven wrong. If I am wrong about anything here, ah, let me know. Who's perfect in any case? All right, guys. So, and ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else. So that, that was my little shtick and spiel uh, with respect to armor and terrain. Kind of interesting, I find. And um, again, it seems like we're practically, what, 175 maybe, 175, 125 subscribers uh, away from the 1,000 mark. 
I'm really blessed to have people like you watching the channel and taking the time out of your busy day to watch my videos. I thank you so much. Um, I also thank Dan, Dan Bacaldi from uh, No Enemies Here for uh, promoting my channel. I know that um, the other fellow that uh, promoted my channel, unbeknown to me for the uh, longest time until I watched this video, was uh, Artie from um, Art Wolf Slayer. He made my channel um, the um, um, channel of the week a, a few years ago. Again, I'm eternally grateful for that. Uh, Grumple Jones, um, the folks in, on the Facebook page for Squad Leader, my opponents, and everyone that has uh, joined the channel as subscribers from day one until new. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I bid you a happy week ahead, a happy year ahead, and happy gaming. Take care.